Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Functional harmony, non-functional harmony. We don't want anything that's non-functional. Yes, we do. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Well, it seems like I've been seeing the term functional harmony on the boards and discussions and stuff like that lately, and it comes up with my students as well. Functional harmony is the type of harmony that draws on the diatonic chords of a scale and uh, prioritizes or privileges tonic dominant relationships. And it's fairly easy to explain. Let me just show you something. So let's say um, I have a scale. C descending scale. I'm going to say it's my melody, not a great melody, but let's harmonize it. C, and the five of C is G. A, the third of A, the third of F is A, and that resolves to C. Here's my F chord again, which resolves to C, and the D is the fifth of G, and it resolves down to C. I've just created a very strong functional harmony progression. I did this. You probably noticed I used only the primary chords of the key of C. Well, the use of those types of chords and secondary dominance as well is a sort of a linchpin of functional harmony and of common practice harmony, maybe even the way you were taught it in school or the way your teacher presented it to you. It's not the only way to skin the cat, but let's take a look at uh, one of the uh, towering giants of functional harmony, Bach, for a moment. We'll look at one of his pieces, El Steal His Melody, and then reharmonize it. That's the plan. Here we go. Here's a Bach chorale. I played it in. You might recognize this melody as a mighty fortress is our God. We're in the key of G. And, you know, just between you and me, very standard diatonic chords. Absolutely gorgeous. I, uh, I have it here, and I've analyzed what's going on, and it's nothing surprising. G, E minor, B minor, C, D7 goes to G. Functional harmony, tonic dominant relationships, root motions in fifths. The B minor is lovely in this context, and of course, we have passing tones as well. For those of you that read music, none of this will be a surprise to you. There's nothing really um, outside of the sort of ordinary scope of G major here. Listen, let's take a look at the melody by itself. All of these tones are just from the G major scale, but you and I both know that any note can be the root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, whatever, of any chord. And that opens up a lot of possibilities for us because we can reharmonize this melody with chords that aren't functional but that are beautiful and that's what I've done let's take a look at my solution to this now I was very interested in creating dense sounding voicings and so I put them in the same range that Bach used dude 300 years ago right he's doing this we're doing this today and it's not functional so these sort of dense voicings are following the same rules that Bach used. No parallel fifths, um, bass can move freely, inner voices, I'm trying to make them move by steps. I'm trying to be very conscious about parallelisms. I'm using contrary motion to highlight the motion of the melody. Well, chit chat away, let's listen to what um, I've got for us here. <laughs> The 
despite the fact that the melody is in the key of G, I knew that I wanted to end on E flat, so that gave me a target. I also knew I wanted to start with a little bit of energetic motion. Let's take a look at my analysis of what I've done. Hopefully it will be helpful. All right, let's close the Bach version. And here's mine. Now, it's a little confusing because what I've done is I've grabbed a snapshot of, uh, of the screen and gone ahead and just typed in chords above it. And what I've done is to begin with a minor seven flat five that opens into the C Lydian sound. And I've given myself sort of some leeway as I analyze these chords because, of course, the melody moves a bit. A minor to C to F, those are all kind of related chords, but they're not functional. There's no tonic dominant relationships. The whole step motion to E flat, and then the tritone motion to A major is sort of surprising and stunning. And when it lands on E major from E flat, we functionally lift it up a half step. It's a powerful sound. Uh, here, this next series of chords is just terrific and fun. The D pushes to G. That's actually a functional relationship. D13 is the 5 of G. But then we have this sinking whole step motion. These are coupled chords, and you can see very clearly things move in parallel as they sink. And it sinks, continues to sink to D, D13, D13 dropping down to D flat. And then really, kind of a pivot, another tritone pivot, E minor to B flat major, and B flat major nine, well, it's a kind of a five to E flat. I've grabbed some of the energy of uh, tonic dominant relationships, but really kind of twisted it. Now, I used my ears to harmonize this, and I also used my knowledge of voice leading and, you know, the what I know works as I as voices move from one chord to another, but I allowed myself to be inspired by what I imagined could come next. Let's listen to it again with all that in mind. <laughs> and I love doing that. Um, I'm not against functional harmony, but I've been trying to take tonic dominant relationships out of my own work. They play a very important role in songwriting of the 30s, 40s, 50s, a less important role in contemporary songwriting where plagal cadences and uh, circular chord systems, you know, really kind of predominate. But if you want to create interesting harmonizations of your melodies, if you have a great melody and you want to harmonize it with um, something that feels really personal, feel free. You are free, but you've got to take some care. Take the time to work out something like this and, and you'll have a deep, rich, sort of chocolatey arrangement. I'll admit, I had to pour myself a second cup of coffee to get this done. It took me about 20 minutes to write this out, but it was 20 minutes well spent. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time.